Hey loves, Kim here and I'm back with another video. So if this is your first time on the channel, I just would like to say welcome and thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you see, feel free to hit that subscribe button and be sure to click that bell. That way you never miss an upload from me. And if you're an OG that's been here for a minute, thank you so much for coming back. So I am here with another Sims 4 tutorial video. In the previous parts, we covered things like actually building the house, foundation, roofs, floor plans, furnishing, different hotkeys, and all of that good stuff. So if you have missed all of that, definitely click the card on the screen or check out the description box below to catch up on the previous parts. But if you're all caught up, let's move on to what I want to talk about next. So I want to focus this tutorial on the outside. And unlike the previous parts, the outside of your home combines both build mode and and by mode to make just this one harmonious beautiful snapshot of your home there are no rules as far as style and taste but there's just kind of like some um, things to keep in mind when you're doing the outside of your house so the first thing I want to tackle are some of the build mode elements actually we're gonna start with by mode let's talk about some of the by mode elements then we'll talk about some of the build mode elements and then we'll talk about the landscaping sounds good great so how you filter out items for the outside like I mentioned in the last video you can do objects by room or objects by function I find that objects by room is a little bit more efficient because it just makes it abundantly clear what's typically found outside and for these tutorials I like to filter its base game that way everybody can have access to all of the content that we're talking about and then if we go to the outdoor section as you can see it's highlighted we have all of these elements that you typically find outside so like your outdoor furniture we also have outdoor um, appliances aka the trash cans and the mailbox you definitely want to have an outdoor bin or your house is going to be absolutely filthy and you want to make sure that you have a mailbox by default um, residential lots come with a mailbox the mailbox is so important because that's how you get your bills that's how you publish your books if you're an author that's how you access a lot of your cheats if you are using cheats so definitely make sure you have one of each of these outdoor cooking is like your barbecue grills lighting of course so you, your sims can see at night and your house can just look better at night as well we have outdoor sculptures so these are like your lawn gnomes your fountains your statues your signage um, certain signages in this category so there's just a lot of things in your outdoor sculptures we also have pet items but since this is just a base game tutorial um, we're not gonna really go into that we have outdoor activities so like your gardening your outdoor play equipment if you have kids wedding arches jacuzzis anything that you have to be outdoors to do would be in that category we have transportation uh, which is pretty much self-explanatory we don't have any just for base game but if you have certain DLC you can have access to those items and then your wall decoration so these are like your bulletin boards your um, certain signage your water hose just things like that now let's talk about the build mode aspect of the outdoor space so we have um, columns we also have gates and fences which we did cover gates and fencing in the other um, video but you know just in case you haven't done it by this point you can find it here you can also find your stairs and staircases your spandrels and your wall sculptures we also have roof decorations as well or roof sculptures as well as far as the build mode side your columns and pillars I like to use them because I feel like they just finish off your lot I like to put them at the corner of my builds like for this particular one I think it will look really good on the siding piece and it just adds just a little bit of something just to finish it off so it doesn't look so flat. I feel like columns and pillars just add a little bit more dimension to your builds and it just kind of breaks up the pattern so it's not too redundant. 
your spandrels pretty much span in between your column and a wall or between two columns as you can see by the picture it's just like this beam that connects the two it looks really really good on porches um, so that's why I recommend you use spandrels at but feel free to use them wherever if you're using a bridge a spandrel and I'll show you what they look like a spandrel could just be a good accent piece just to make it look more fortified and a bit more dressed up and fancy. Under the windowsill we have wall sculptures so this is where you will find your awnings, your planter boxes, your faux balconies, um, even even like some random items. This is called a mega wall hunk. Um, this will probably look good on a build that's mostly made out of wood or something more nautical or something, uh, maybe like a period build, uh, if you were trying to make something look like it was made out of adobe or clay or something like that, I think this will be a good accent piece. There's this random vent. <laughs> so I like to use these inside of some of my bathrooms so it looks like there's like a vent in there. And um, there's also corbels. So pretty much what a corbel is, and I'll bring it out, it's like this little, it's more decorative than structural. But it's like this little piece of wood that sticks out from the wall. This definitely looks good under um, like a roof pitch. If it will snap. But it looks really good under the pitch of a roof. I see that a lot in craftsman style builds. Also these look good under certain awnings. It looks like it's um, structural but it's really not as more decorative. Corbels also look really good if you have like a open space and I know we're talking about the outside but let me just give you an example. Corbels look really good inside of your house too like at the corner of a wall. And it just adds a little something so this is just all your personal taste corbels are really prevalent in like farmhouse builds rustic style so i um, just throwing some ideas out there of what corbels can be used for moving from the actual house let's talk about landscaping so to access the landscaping it will be over here in the UI and you can start with the outdoor plants so, I mean, we have trees, we have different bushes, and shrubs, <laughs> flowers. We also have rocks. And then the infinity sign means everything is filtered. So, yeah, just like in real life, I mean, you have all of these different elements. And when you put them together in a harmonious way, it just creates a beautiful landscape. We also have terrain tools. So I like terrain tools to add just a little bit of texture to the builds as you see right now. The ground is pretty much grass. It is a little splotchy in some areas, but that's just the neighborhood itself. So terrain paints just adds a little bit of more dimension. You know, it makes your house look like maybe, you know, it was into some dirt or if it was raining. You know, or is a more rainy area, you can use like a muddy texture just to indicate that the ground is wet. It also looks really, really good underneath shrubs, in my personal opinion. I just feel like it grounds those elements into the ground so it doesn't look like it's just plopped onto green grass. Like, if you see the difference between these two, the one on the left is on top of the terrain paint. And it just makes it look like it's actually growing out of the ground. Whereas the one on the right is just kind of plopped on top so it looks pretty staged. So I feel like that is a huge advantage to use um, the terrain paints because it just makes things look more realistic. There's a bunch of different options. There's um, the flower and grass terrain. So if you wanted it to make it look like there's flowers on the ground or if you're like an Oasis Springs. Pretty much the same thing but with more of like desert sand and regular grass. There's also um, these more lighter brownie colors. Um, so it really just depends on the area that you're in. There's also just ones that is more grass oriented. So tons of options. Also underneath the terrain paints we have these stone and paver texture textures.
excuse me, stone and paper textures. So if you wanted to do like a garden path, maybe like from the front to the back, it's just it's a cute little option. And it just allows you to have a stone look without having to stick to the grid system. So it's definitely a more organic way. And like I said, this is definitely ideal for uh, walking paths in a garden or at a park, things like that. The next category is dirt and sand, pretty self-explanatory, really good at a beach really good at more coastal areas if you're trying to go for sand and the dirt like i said before looks really good under trees shrubs and flowers just to make make it look like it's actually growing out of the ground instead of um sitting on top of the grass and then you have different options for how you want to paint. So we have several different sizes. We also have circles and squares. And if you wanted to get rid of it all, just click the eraser tool and just erase it. So the paintbrush lets you paint, erase tool lets you erase. Next, I want to talk about the fountains. So the fountains, we have some um, fountains that you can create yourself. Similar to pools, you can draw out an area and there you have a fountain. As you can see, fountains aren't too deep. They're really shallow. I mean, don't worry, your Sims can't fall in. But we have all of these different pre-made shapes and then the ones that you can draw. The difference is the ones that you can draw yourself has an arrow pointing down and then the pre-made shapes are um, the ones without the arrow. Fountains go really, really well with these water emitters, aka water jets. And in live mode, um, you can see the water moving. There's tons of different options. If it is a leaping water emitting, emitter, usually that means that it's at an angle. So let's get a close up on this one. It's at an angle. So it's going to be shooting over in like a um, arcing type of way. If it says dancing, that means that the water jet is going to be on and off. So um, it might be a few seconds running and then a few seconds not running. And then if it says jet water emitter, that means that it's going to be on all of the time. And that's pretty much how it looks. And all of these, there's pretty much a small, medium, and large option. Um, and that just kind of dictates how big the um, water jet is going to be, how high up it's going to spray. We also have dome water emitters so as you can see it's kind of going out in all different types of directions so yeah tons of options definitely explore we have fountain trims which is what you would just put on the edge of your fountain just to make it look a bit more fancy smancy and so it doesn't look like a wreck like just a random rectangle in the ground the trim makes it look like there's a real start and end to these fountains and then in the fountain decorations, um, these are basically like things that you would see around a fountain. So, I mean, we have this triple tiered fountain here. So this is a fountain within itself. We don't need to create one for the water to work. There's also some fountain lights and um, these double as pool lights as well. So you can put this inside of a fountain. As you can see, let's turn it to nighttime mode. Just so you can see what I'm talking about, you can put it inside of the fountain and it looks really, really good at night. And just more options for you guys to play with. So definitely play around. More fountains that are a bit more decorative. Um, this decal goes on the floor of a, mount, uh, of a fountain, <laughs> not a mountain. So let's turn it back to daylight. And as you can see at the bottom of the fountain, you have these decals here and it just adds a little bit more of a decorative touch and the same thing with these lily pads but they don't sit at the bottom of the fountain like the decals they sit more so towards the top so yeah definitely fun fun times have fun with that we also have pools and open water we're not going to worry about the open water but the pools are very similar to fountains. I mean, we have the options for you to draw the shape itself. 
and the pre-shaped ones. And with the pre-shaped ones, you can always adjust the size with these arrows here, just like a room, just like a wall, you can adjust whatever. Um, using these arrows on the side and of course the ones with the arrow going down you can make whatever shape you want yourself in the pull option you have pull trim as well similar to the um, fountains and with the pool you have the object to actually change the type of water so by default it's the ordinary chlorinated pool water but there's other options as well to tailor your taste and then we have these pool objects here so like your ladder so your sim can get in and out with the sims 4 you don't necessarily need a ladder but I mean it helps you can put it on the edge again we have those pool lights and those decals so yeah, that is pretty much pools. Um, with the pools and the fountains, you can change the wall coverings on the inside. So if you wanted the inside of your pool to be brick, just go into your wall patterns and just change it like you would do any other wall. And if you look closely enough, let me put something a little bit over the top you can see that the pool wall is changing so just to add a little bit more customization you do have the option to do it that way same thing with the fountains and I'll show you if you look really close you can see that I'm changing the inside of the fountains and the floor patterns work the same way. You can change the floor of a pool. And if you look at this fountain on the left, definitely am able to change the flooring. Same thing with inside of the pool. And by the way guys, as you can see, I still have a little bit of that terrain paint left over. If you want to get rid of just all of the extra terrain paint not natural to the game or not, um, not default to this particular lot, just go underneath the bulldozing option in our top middle UI panel and click the second option that says bulldoze terrain and it just gets rid of all of the terrain that wasn't originally on this lot. Some things you can't get rid of. But as you can see, that um, stone and paper terrain that I made, it disappeared. So what I'm going to do now is apply all of the things that I talked about so far in this tutorial. And I'm going to really turn up the curb appeal on this house. And then once I'm done, I'll talk you through the things that I've added to really spruce it up on the outside.
right you guys so I am done decorating the outside of the home I feel like this house has a lot more curb appeal now as you can see I've done a lot with the landscaping and a lot with a lot of those buy mode items that I was telling you guys about so let's just take a closer look so if you notice there are a lot of trees flowers shrubs all of that good stuff how I tend to do landscaping is that I look around at the surrounding area and see what's going on in the actual neighborhood and I try to match that and I start using my environment kind of like as a base and then I build on it and I just I do what makes me feel happy at the end of the day but I kind of get a start with the outdoor surroundings so um, if you notice this tree right here in the back is right outside of our fence so this tree I put here because it matches a lot of the trees in the world and I believe that one is called a European birch tree yeah Oh, European beech tree, excuse me. And that just matched a lot of the trees in the surrounding areas. And then the other trees that I used on the property are called Hawthorne. And um, I picked those because they matched this bigger tree back here. So I'm not sure if they're the same breed. They're probably not, but it looked similar enough to where it can fade into the background and look pretty seamless to um, the surrounding environment. As far as the shrubs and things, I was just noticing these little bushes and things along the sidewalk. And I just picked things that were similar sizes. With landscaping, um, a common rule of thumb is to do it in groups of three. So if you notice, like towards the front, I have three bushes here. I have three sets of flowers here. Three sets of like these filler flowers. Just, I feel like three is a good number. It's an odd number, so it's not so symmetrical and you know symmetrical can be considered boring to some people so it offsets it because it's an odd number but also one is too few five can be too many especially for a smaller house like this and on the left side of the house I actually kept in with the three theme as well so with these taller bushes I used three of them and I just staggered them in between the windows so it draws your eye to um, the windows but you also notice the landscaping below and again with like these filler bushes and shrubs um, these are like low-lying plants and I accented it with a vibrant color so you can notice that in these um, lavender bushes it has a nice pop of purple to contrast with the green and I also chose these sunflowers one because they make me happy but two yellow is a color complement of purple they're opposite on the color wheel so they work really well together and you know I also used a lot of the rocks to fill in some of the gaps and just to ground all of the green just to tie it back with the um, with the landscaping. I also added rocks around the trees just because I felt like it just felt natural. Why not? I mean sometimes when you put a tree you tend to leave it by itself. I just feel like adding a rock <laughs> just puts a little something in there. It's a different texture. It's a different color. So definitely nice visual contrast. If you notice I use this fountain here as well it's just a nice little piece to put in the corner um, and it stands out because I don't know about you guys but I don't see too many fountains at houses anymore I did um, growing up but now it's not as common so I just thought it was nice thought it was really really nice um, as far as the buy mode side I also added these gnomes I never use garden gnomes but I thought they were fun and I think I'm gonna use them a bit more often if you look at the front porch like I said I have some seating areas and a couple of indoor plants just so your sims can get outside and see life walking past them I just feel like it it's inviting you know when you have seats on your front porch you can really just disconnect from your devices and really just taking the world around you so I guess my process was really trying to look at this through the eyes of the sim and think about what I would want if I had a very nice front porch like this 
and I chose the red cushion on the seat because it matches the red doors and I particularly like terracotta um, pot holders outside I just feel like it's a more natural color and it looks better outside so all of these little plants are in terracotta jars um, definitely use whatever you like but that's just my preference and I added in a little bit of a light here so at night time you can see the front door you know and it just brightens up the house at night let's move along to the back side of the house and notice the lovely lovely walking path I just thought this was really really cute to contrast with the um, the dirt that I used and again it's just inviting so we get to the back and this is where I have a lot of the outdoor activities so I have a table outside so your sims can dine I also added in a little ceiling fan so they can keep cool in the warmer months and then there's also a little barbecue grill I was going to use the bigger one but we don't have a whole lot of space and I wanted your sims to be able to move around so I just kept with the smaller one I also have a couple of planter boxes so if your sims are into um, growing their own vegetables maybe selling them keeping them eating them for themselves you know they have that option and I have two of the squares one of the little one I just put more square planter boxes because you can get more out of it you can plant four things at a time whereas with the little circle one only one and we have more garden gnomes here more trees I also have this little uh, monkey bar set uh, inside of this house I do have a kids room so I would imagine that the kids would like something fun to do outside so I just thought that was super cool and I added in more gates so your sims don't have to go all the way to the front of the house to exit the lot they can exit from the back as well and then there's also a swimming pool swimming pools are definitely a luxury and the game knows that swimming pools are very very expensive but if your sims can afford one I definitely um, I would advise you to invest in one I mean you can invite friends over you can have pool parties um, you know it's just a nice little feature I have a couple of these loungers so your sims can lay out maybe get a tan or just have a place to sit while the others are in the pool splashing around a little table so if you have a drink you can set it down I got these decorative towels sitting here because I thought that was very realistic but you know you can use that side table for whatever you want and I even put in some of these turtle decals and this more fancier decal on the inside. I thought it was super cute. There is a, um, a ladder. I'm going to shift that over one just so it's not so close to that gate. And yeah, that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this part of my Sims 4 tutorial series. Let me know down in the comments if you learned anything new. Also, let me know some of your ideas with some of your builds in the future. I would love to read them. And yeah, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so, so much for watching. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. It helps me and the channel out more than you know. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to click that bell that way you never miss an upload from me I will be doing more parts with this particular house so it won't be available on the gallery just yet but feel free to check out anything else I've created my origin ID is simply dash Nisi and if you're interested in anything I'm posting on social media my social media links are down in the description box again thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next video bye guys